Rafael Dos Anjos vs Tony Ferguson Mookie Alexander, this fight is really dependent on Ferguson's in-fight strategy. I do not think his style of fighting however entertaining and awesome it may be is sustainable against the absolute elite of the division. Sure, he put away Bardoza, but he also was nearly stopped by Lando Venato on short notice. It's high risk, high reward, and RDA isn't the type of fighter I can see succumbing to that. Now, there's no denying Ferguson is gifted offensively, and in a fierce striking matchup, he has more finishing tools in his game than Rafael, who developed his striking later in his career. I do not expect Ferguson to submit Nos Anjas or just plain out grapple him. It's arguably more likely that he'll find himself in trouble with RDA that way as opposed to keeping it standing. Dos Anjas has brutal kicks that can wear anybody out, but I don't think Ferguson is the sort of fighter who will buckle when faced with RDA's pressure fighting. I'm going back. Ferguson by TKO, Round 4 Nick Baldwin, this is a really, really fun lightweight matchup between a former champ and one of the top up-and-comers in the sport. Both Dos Anjas and Ferguson are well-rounded, both have excellent striking and their fair share of submission wins, too. I think, however, that the Brazilian is coming back too soon from his devastating loss to Eddie Alvarez this past summer. He also recently left King's MMA, which could turn out to be a mistake either way, it's a distraction. Ferguson has a super funky game, one like no one else's, and Dos Anjas might just have trouble finding success. Tony Ferguson via submission Round 3 Zane Simon, can Ferguson fight like a video game ninja in Mexico City, at that kind of elevation? I kinda doubt it. He could KO RDA early, but I'm not betting on that. Outside of that, RDA is monumentally tough to submit or outgrapple in his high pressure, high pace style is much more consistent and should translate better to fighting in that atmosphere. Add in that Ferguson has been hurt or beat up in each of his last three bouts and I think this is the point he finally pays for being reckless as hell. RDA by TKO, Round 3 Staff picking RDA, Zane, Phil Staff picking Ferguson, Bristle, Nick, Mookie, Time, Steffi Marcin Held vs Diego Sanchez Mookie Alexander, I'm tempted to pick Diego for the upset just on work rate alone, which can carry him in the later rounds in addition to the fact that we've seldom seen Diego just get hopelessly worked over on the ground and having to defend a series of submissions from the bottom. All of that said, there's very little out of 2015-16 Diego Sanchez to make you think he's actually going to consistently perform well against top 20 lightweights, of which I think held as one. Marcin held by unanimous decision. Nick Baldwin, ugh. Diego Sanchez is still fighting in 2016. Well, here we go. Sanchez, the tough one winner, doesn't have much left in the gas tank. He's always been known for his ferocity. On the feet and sometimes dangerous striking, but that's lacking nowadays. He's never been choked out in his veteran career, but Held has a nasty ground game, so this could be the first time we see Sanchez get finished on the mat. I'm looking forward to seeing how Held looks in his debut coming over from Bellator. Although I think a finish is very possible here. I'll go Marcin held via unanimous decision. Zane Simon, Diego doesn't tend to get subbed, but I'll be damned if I pick him to beat any top 3-0 ISH lightweight in the prime of their career. Marcin held via submission. UFC Fight Night, Dos Anjas vs Ferguson staff picks and predictions. The Bloody Elmo staff has made its predictions for tomorrow night's UFC Fight Night 98 card in Mexico City, Mexico. Only Zane Simon and Phil McKenzie back Rafael Dos Anjos to beat Tony Ferguson in the main event. Meanwhile, Tim Burke is the only one picking Diego Sanchez over Marcin Held in the co-main. Even with the brutal weight miss, it's pretty split between Charles Oliveira and Ricardo Lamas. Note, predictions are entered throughout the week and collected the day before the event. Explanations behind each pick are not required and some writers opt not to do so for their own reasons. For example, if Nick Baldwin entered all of his predictions on Wednesday without adding in any explanations, he has no idea if he's going to be the only one siding with one fighter for any given fight. 